The next item of business is a statement by Aileen Campbell on Tackling Child Poverty Delivery Plan, First Year Progress Report. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions and no interruptions. And I call on Aileen Campbell for 15 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. 20 years ago, when this Parliament was reconvened, it was because the people of Scotland wanted its own Parliament to make its own decisions on the priorities of the Scottish people. Reducing child poverty is a clear example of where we can do that. When the UK Government decided to remove the child poverty remit from the Social Mobility Commission and abandon its child poverty targets, this Government didn't agree. We withdrew from that commission and brought forward our own Child Poverty Scotland Bill, introducing new statutory targets to reduce child poverty. The bill was unanimously passed and followed by the first Tackling Child Poverty Delivery Plan. That is devolution in action and that is where collectively we can make a difference. Today I have published a first year progress report on that delivery plan, which shows we've been working hard to build the foundations for transformational change. The most recent poverty statistics for 2017-18 show that almost a quarter of children live in relative poverty in Scotland. These figures, though lower than at a UK level, are totally unacceptable. They predate the delivery plan, but the challenge we face is clear and this government is determined to tackle it. Our progress report shows that after the first year, 48 of the 50 actions in the plan are already in progress or being delivered. For example, we launched our new devolved employability service, Fair Start Scotland, in April last year. Job outcomes are encouraging and service users are positive about their experience and our programmes don't penalise people through sanctioning benefits. This is a real divergence from the previous UK Government's work programme. The progress report also demonstrates the great package of support this Government provides for families throughout childhood, from birth to school and beyond, all helping to reduce costs for families. One example of that is the partnership with local government. We have set the National Minimum School Clothing Grant at an increased level of £100 from the start of this academic year, backed by joint annual investment of £12 million. In November, we launched our new financial health check service through Scotland's Network of Citizens Advice Bureau. This provides families with the help they need to maximise their incomes and beat the poverty premium. And since the publication of the delivery plan, we are now delivering through our new social security system, new benefits to low income households. All three elements of Best Start Grant are now open to families across Scotland, backed by £21 million this year. The unprecedented number of applications we have received shows that if you take away barriers, remove stigma and encourage people to apply, people will take up the benefits on offer. On Monday, the third carers allowance supplement was paid to increase financial support for carers. This means £452.40 a year more is going to carers here than out with Scotland. The Poverty and Inequality Commission has welcomed activity underway and advised us that our investment must match the scale of ambition, and we agree. The progress report provides a first estimate of our direct spend on low-income families, £527 million in 1819 alone. But of course, this is not the whole story. This estimate does not include the social contract that delivers the universal services we all enjoy and from which our society benefits. A multi-billion pound package of additional investment is in place in key areas to help all children and all parents, whether low income or not, realise their full potential. As a government, we are proud of what we've achieved already and we will keep on delivering. Over the next year, we will build on a number of key areas. For example, progressing on delivering our massive investment in universal early learning and childcare, which will save families on average £4,500 per child. And on Monday, I launched a new £3 million fund to support delivery of accessible and affordable community-based childcare and experiences for school-aged children. And by the end of the year, we will launch our new programme of parental employment support to help parents return to work and progress in their careers. Presiding officer, this government is taking action in challenging times. This week, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty is at the UN to set out the damage being caused by the UK government's policies. 
His reports make for shocking reading. Professor Philip Alston said the social security safety net was being systematically dismantled. He called out the two-child limit for the despicable policy it is, and he railed against the four-year benefits freeze. These disastrous UK government policies that are driving increases in child poverty are rightly described by the rapporteur as punitive, mean-spirited and often callous. The Scottish Government does not have the powers to reverse or scrap UK reserved policies. We have previously estimated that welfare cuts since 2010 would amount to 3.7 billion annually by 2020-21. Professor Alston said it was unsustainable for devolved administrations to mitigate everything, and I agree. And for those who don't want these policies, rather than being content with mitigation, why not join me in calling for full powers over areas such as employment and social security so we don't have to tackle disadvantage with one hand tied behind our backs? Our commitment to work towards introducing an income supplement for low-income families within the lifetime of this delivery plan is a flagship policy designed to shift the curve of child poverty. And over the last year, the Scottish Government has undertaken a thorough assessment of a range of options in line with the original two tests set out in the delivery plan. In line with the first test, we looked at how to target families who need the additional income most to lift children out of poverty. This analysis of cost and impacts is published today. In line with the second test, we also considered how to ensure a robust and viable delivery route that protects the safe and secure transfer of the devolved benefits. These are brought together in a position paper which is also published today. Presiding officer, a year ago today, the First Minister appointed me as Community's Cabinet Secretary and Shirley Ann Somerville as Cabinet Secretary for Social Security and gave both of us the responsibility for tackling poverty and we've worked closely together on the income supplement policy. Reducing poverty and achieving a fairer Scotland is why we came into politics. We don't want to live in a country where we have to mitigate against the policies of another government, where children go hungry because their families have had to wait months for their first universal credit payment, where 85% of benefit spending remains under the control of another government, where we can't change the minimum wage to tackle in-work poverty, and the majority in this parliament don't want that either. But while we do not yet have all the powers we need, we are not content to sit blithely by and allow the children of Scotland to bear the brunt of Tory austerity. Our ambitions require bold action. We must use the powers that we have to deliver on our commitment to tackle poverty. And that is why I am delighted to confirm that we will use our new social security powers to introduce a new benefit to tackle child poverty. This new financial support will be delivered by Social Security Scotland and called the Scottish Child Payment. By the end of 2022, this payment will be for all eligible children aged under 16. The payment will be monthly and will be operated annually in line with inflation and all children in eligible families will be entitled to this support. There will be no cap on the number of children in this or any other social security policy in Scotland. The payment will be based on qualifying benefits, including universal credit, job seekers allowance and child tax credits. However, as universal credit is not due to be fully rolled out until 2023 at the earliest, many families will still be in receipt of legacy benefits. This would make automation of the service always complex and time consuming, particularly challenging. So, in order to deliver the new payment, Social Security Scotland will manage an application-based process. As with all benefits delivered by us, we will work hard to get maximum take-up. And while we will introduce the Scottish Child Payment by the end of 2022, at a time when we are delivering a suite of complex devolved benefits, we have listened to the voices of frontline poverty campaigners, including people with lived experience, who are facing the impact of UK government welfare cuts now. We have therefore looked carefully at what is deliverable within an earlier timescale, considered what the effects to other aspects of our social security programme might be, and sought an approach that will have the biggest impact on children living in poverty. The outcome of that work is that I'm delighted to announce we will introduce the Scottish Child Payment for all eligible children under six 
by the end of this parliamentary term, much, much earlier than our original commitment. The approach we have decided upon is informed by these two facts. Almost 60% of all children in poverty live in a family with at least one child under the age of six. And we know that making a difference in the early years of a child's life has the biggest impact on long-term outcomes. Presiding officer, we must shift the curve on child poverty and providing direct support to parents can do just that. Therefore, I can announce today that our new Scottish child payment will be £10 a week. <laughs> and for a two-child family, this additional financial support of over £1,000 a year will make a major difference. Presiding officer, the child, Scottish child payment is a significant turning point in our action to tackle child poverty and one which will benefit hundreds of thousands of children. The decisions we have taken to enable early delivery from next year will benefit 140,000 households with 170,000 children and is a substantial investment in families in Scotland. When the policy is fully rolled out by the end of 2022, 410,000 children, over a third of Scottish children, will be eligible for the payment. We expect the Scottish Child Payment to lift 30,000 children out of relative poverty altogether and reduce the relative poverty rate by three percentage points, as well as increasing the family incomes of many tens of thousands more. The payment will help prevent poverty for families on insecure incomes just above the poverty threshold who are facing UK government welfare cuts and it will help children at risk of material deprivation, another of our targets. A payment that prevents deprivation and protects those who need our support is something that this government and this parliament can and should be proud of. The Scottish Government is today making a conscious and deliberate decision to prioritise action to tackle child poverty for the remainder of this parliament and beyond. But doing what we know is right and doing so early means tough decisions and choices. Tackling child poverty will be central to the budget and spending review in the coming months. There will also be implications for the delivery of other aspects of our social security programme. Audit Scotland's recent report noted that it is difficult to see how the programme could progress more quickly. So it's clear that we will need to make the necessary space to deliver the new payment early and successfully. And it's important to be open with the Parliament from the outset. We've already carried out extensive work to ensure that we can deliver. We're also aware that we will need to actively manage the delivery of the payment within a highly complex and challenging existing programme. Therefore, over the summer, officials will carry out further formal assessment of the challenges and develop a clear plan for how to mitigate them. This will include any issues relating to IT systems, staffing, supplier management and our enabling services. I can say now that we will absolutely deliver disability assistance for working age people, our replacement for PIP, in early 2021 as outlined to Parliament in February. And we are on track to deliver our first disability benefit, disability assistance for children and young people, next summer as announced. Our expectation is that the launch of our new claim service for disability assistance for older people, the devolved form of DWP's attendance allowance, may need to take place in 2021, rather than in 2020 as originally planned. There may be an impact on the launch date for the new claims of Scottish Carers Allowance, which may need to move back a few months to early 2022. There could also be an impact on the date when we expect to complete the transfer of benefit cases from DWP to Social Security Scotland. We have today responded to an initiated question on the implications of this on Social Security delivery. The Social Security Secretary will update Parliament with more detail in the autumn following the completion of the impact assessment. These are difficult decisions, but ones that we are making for the right reason. After all, the risk of not delivering on the ambition of the payment is, what, is that we do not shift the curve on child poverty in the way that we know that we have to. And that is why, given the commitment across this Parliament towards tackling child poverty and the collective agreement to target SET, the support of all MSPs to enable the early introduction of this payment is crucial. Presiding officer, our progress report sets out the first year of action and the clear steps that we have taken towards genuine reductions in child poverty. These actions demonstrate our commitment to eradicating child poverty 
and offer a glimpse of what is possible when we have the powers and the will to do so. The Scottish Child Payment on its own stands to be one of the most progressive policy proposals put forward since devolution and it will be backed by significant investment and Scotland will be the only part of the UK that is making such a serious commitment to reducing and ultimately eradicating child poverty. The Scottish Child Payment of £10 a week is bold and it is ambitious and vitally it will reduce child poverty and tackling child poverty head on is the only way that we can make Scotland the best place in the world to grow up. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement, and I will allow around 30 minutes for that. Uh, would members who wish to ask a question please press the request to speak buttons now, and I call Michelle Ballantyne. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I, can I thank the Minister for the advance sight of her statement and I look forward to engaging with the Government on the development of the content of this document. So I have two questions for you very quickly. Um, firstly, I note there aren't any numbers in this statement. So can the Minister tell us what the Scottish Child Payments estimated delivery costs are in the interim and when fully rolled out? And secondly, I have to raise the concern because I find myself in the chamber again hearing that there will be delays to the management of some of the devolved benefits. And I wonder if the minister can give me assurance today that there won't be any further delays to those benefits. Aileen Campbell. We um, have set out, and I set out very clearly in my statement, significant numbers associated with this policy. The biggest one, the most significant one, is the 30,000 children that will be lifted out of poverty by this action alone. The other number will be the three percentage point shift in the child poverty curve that we have needed to shift for such a long time, made all the more difficult by Michelle, Gov Michelle Ballantyne's government's actions. I think it's important to recognise, though, that, that we will uh, be significantly investing in the delivery of this. Uh, in the first full year of our early payments to under sixes, costs will be around uh, 70 million uh, and then rise to 180 million in the first full year of all payments to under 16s. But I have to say, presiding officer, given that there was a, a report published today by Child Poverty Action Group about the impact of the two child limit, today really is a story of two governments. This yeah. government committed to tackling child poverty head on, while others in the rest of the UK are having to be feeling the brunt of UK government's callous and punitive actions which are destroying lives across the country. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Can I thank uh, the Minister for the early sight of the statement? And we will, of course, require to scrutinise the supplementary papers and the um, progress report. Having consistently put the case for the need for interim measures prior to the implementation date of 2022 for an income supplement, Scottish Labour welcomes the fact the government has responded with proposals to put in place a payment to families with children under six years during this parliamentary term. But the Minister must recognise that the ambitious targets set by this parliament in 2017 to significantly reduce child poverty will not be met by this single measure alone and we do remain concerned for all other children living in poverty right now. The Scottish Government said at stage three in 2017, we need to find ways to do more than just mitigate austerity and welfare reform. And having mentioned uh, the two-child policy, can I ask the Minister why she will not even take steps to mitigate the so-called rape clause, which she has called a despicable policy. And given that the Resolution Foundation has predicted that child poverty is on course to continue rising over the next five years and to hit a 20 year high of around 29% by 2023-24. Can she please tell us what other further substantial measures the government will put in place to ensure a dramatic reduction in child poverty over the next year? Aileen Campbell. Well, today, President uh, Officer, I thought I was announcing something that would be welcomed by Labour, given that they do and have asked for this, and given that we have made substantial efforts to tackle child poverty through this action alone. It, it is a game changer. Other poverty uh, groups have uh, welcomed this. It's a shame that Labour won't get behind this uh, action. 
And can I say in terms of mitigating, what a pity that we cannot raise the debate on this. When we have the powers to deliver, when we have the political will and the resolve, this is the type of actions we can deliver. And imagine the reach of this policy if we didn't have to mitigate the disastrous policies that are coming from another government. If, I welcome Elaine Smith's uh, uh, proposal to scrutinise the, the rest of the documents that we've published today. I would, though, ask her to scrutinise the Every Child, Every Chance document. That under, undertakes to comprehensively look at all the policies we're taking, not just in my portfolio, not just in Shirley Ann's portfolio, but right across government, because collectively in government, we committed to tackling child poverty head on and have a range of actions there that will complement the, the delivery of the Scottish child payment to ensure that we can make and reach our interim targets. We move to open questions. I have Rona Mackay, followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am absolutely delighted that this new payment has been introduced, as it will provide substantial support to people in my constituency as well as across Scotland. Can the Cabinet Secretary um, just repeat again what the annual investment will be in this new benefit? Aileen Campbell. Thank you, and I thank uh, Rona Mackay for uh, asking this question because it gives us a chance to underline the investment that we are putting into uh, this policy. And in the first full year of our early payments to under sixes, 2021-22 uh, costs will be around 70 million. That will then rise to 180 million in the first full year of all payments to under 16s by 2022-23. So that is a significant investment in children and families and should also be seen alongside the more than half a billion pounds we invest currently uh, and have done in last year alone, supporting low-income families from across a wide range of policy areas. Alison Johnson, followed by Alex Neal. Thank you, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. Um, across the board, means-tested payments have lower rates of take-up than universal payments. Um, child benefit, a trusted well-known source of support, is claimed by around 95% of eligible families, and your own analysis today um, suggests it would have better coverage. So if the Scottish Government isn't going to use child benefit as a route to boost family incomes, what assurances can the Cabinet Secretary give that every low-income family eligible for the Scottish Child Payment will receive it, especially as the gateway benefits the Cabinet Secretary mentions are themselves underclaimed? Aileen Campbell. And I also uh, explained that we would also make sure that we would maximise uptake. The qualifying benefits uh, will be universal credit, universal credit legacy benefits, that includes child tax credit, working tax credit, income support housing benefit, income based job seekers allowance and income based ESA. A huge way in which we can target the, the those that need the support most. It is also important to recognise that almost two thirds of all children we expect to receive the payment live in the poorest 30% of all households with children and almost a quarter of all children we expect to receive the payment live in the poorest 10% of all households with uh, children. So this will uh, be, as the Child Poverty Action Group have described, uh, a game changer in terms of tackling uh, child poverty. Lifting 30,000 children out of poverty, shifting the curd three percentage points and making sure that the families who need it most get the support and get this, uh, this payment uh, into their pockets to lift the children who need the support out of poverty. Alex Neil, followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I give an absolutely unequivocal welcome to this measure and the fact that it's being brought forward with implementation before the end of this parliamentary session is to be particularly welcomed. We all know the reasons why there has been a substantial rise in child benefit as a result of the major cuts to social security benefits uh, imposed by the UK government. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she will also now look again at the policy on the living wage, because if we move towards some kind of Brexit decision, one of the problems we had was that under EU rules, we're not allowed to uh, make it compulsory for those gaining public sector contracts to pay the living wage. Given the new circumstances likely to arise over the next year or two, will she look again at whether we can now get to a position where we can implement that measure as NHS Health Scotland has shown that that too would be a very effective measure in dealing with child poverty? Aileen Campbell. 
And uh, Alec Neal is absolutely right to point out the link. Uh, and the, one of the drivers of poverty is uh, around low, low income. And we, we also have to tackle alongside this payment, making sure that people who uh, are working get a, a fair uh, remuneration for that effort uh, and also tackle in-work uh, poverty. Uh, and that is exactly why the work that has been taken across government to uh, ensure that more employers pay the living wage is so critical. And even though we don't have the levers at our disposal, Scotland actually has proportionately more uh, people in receipt of, of the living wage. And that is something that shows you with the will and with the, with the resolve that we can influence some of those decisions despite not having the powers uh, here uh, as well. I would also point out to uh, Alec Neil that in Every Child, Every Chance, the report that we're publishing today, there's also a host of other other ways in which we are supporting uh, uh, work uh, and supporting parental uh, parents into, into work to ensure that they get the support they need to get access to jobs and also progress uh, as well when they're in employment. And that comes with a uh, significant uh, investment as well to ensure that we can uh, enable parents to get the right work uh, in the right jobs to lift themselves out of poverty as well. Alex Cole Hamilton, followed by Shona Robson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Government for the content of today's statement and offer the full support of these benches? I'd like to ask about uptake also, uh, in the same vein as Alison Johnston. Last week, uh, Willie Rennie revealed to First Minister's questions that only a third of families affected by poverty with two year olds uh, are uptaking the free childcare places available to them. As such, we know that uptake is not always great in government initiatives. Will the uh, Cabinet Secretary undertake to report to Parliament on uptake as we proceed with the implementation of this policy. Aileen Campbell. Well, Shirley Ann Silverwell has to report uh, back uh, anyway. I would just mention, though, some of the things that I did say in the statement uh, around the Best Start grant, and that, was, that received unprecedented numbers of application. And again, just points to the fact that if you take away uh, the stigma, if you encourage people to apply, people will take up the benefits uh, on offer. And we'll certainly make sure that we use and explore all avenues open to us through the new payment and the delivery partner, uh, the Social Security Scotland, to make sure that we maximise maximise uh, the impact of that and ensure that we work alongside uh, those that are wanting to be part of this to maximise the uptake to make sure that people who need it most get access to this important benefit. Shona Robson followed by Alison Harris. Can I also warmly welcome today's uh, announcement. Uh, the UN Special Rapporteur said that for devolved administrations mitigation wasn't sustainable. Do you agree with me that to have full powers over all social security, employment and other areas would ensure that we could use all levers available to poor, pull more people out of poverty and not have to use resources to protect people from another government's policies? Aileen Campbell. I, I do agree. And what's, what strikes me as puzzling, though, is why there are groans coming from the Labour benches yep. through what is a very legitimate question to be asked. We are not content to just mitigate. We are not content to tackle these things with one hand tied behind our back. Yep. But we're not just going to sit back, which is why we're using the powers that we do have to deliver, to deliver the benefits for those that need it most. Not just content with mitigation, which it seems to be where Labour are. And why would we be content to mitigate when we're actually working up against a government who have been described as harsh and uncaring, which are politically driven and ideologically driven decisions around welfare are consigning thousands of children into poverty. So we will, uh, we will use the powers that we have. We will do what we can to mitigate where we can. But the UN rapporteur said that it wasn't sustainable to mitigate all the actions of the UK government. And we'll continue to make sure that we can have all the powers that we need to tackle poverty more generally in the way that this party and this government knows and wants to. Alison Harris, followed by Mark Griffin. Oops, sorry. Thank you. As the Cabinet Secretary stated, on Monday the Government announced funding for impact assessments for community-based out-of-school care, which will take two years to complete commencing April 2020. I know a framework is to be published at the end of this summer, but can I ask when we will actually see new systems being put in place to deliver on the Government's commitment on out-of-school care for school-aged children from low-income families? Aileen Campbell. It, the £3 million pounds that we announced this week was... Uh, designed to test uh, new approaches to make sure that we can 
focus the, the care and support that is required for children of school age to enable parents to access work uh, and uh, training. And that's why it's important that we do test that. We test the flexibility. We test different ways in which that can be deliver delivered. And that's why I, I launched that fund with Marie Todd to complement the work that she's taken forward and driving forward the transformational change in early learning uh, and childcare. But we'll endeavour to make sure that Alison Harris is kept informed about the progress and the uh, framework for that and make sure that she's kept informed because this is uh, this is a critical part of ensuring that parents get the support they need to get back into access to work as long as that work is paying things like the living wage. Mark Griffin followed by Tom Arthur. Thank you very much, President Officer. We absolutely welcome that the government have listened to the voices of frontline poverty campaigners and indeed um, Labour voices who have consistently called for the early introduction of um, the income supplement. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, though, and I do this on a completely constructive basis, if she shares concerns around using universal credit as a qualifying um, benefit, given, she said herself in her own statement, that children often go hungry because families have had to wait months for their first universal credit payment. Universal credit is roundly and rightly being criticised, can the government not find an alternative way of delivering um, this payment? Aileen Campbell. We have uh, set out a comprehensive analysis of why this is the model and this is the approach that we've taken. It's the same approach that we've taken for Best Start Grant. It, it also makes the point that we are using those legacy benefits as well to make sure that we can tackle and, and, and target uh, the, the right families who need the support most. So um, while there was groans and moans around mitigation and not wanting us to call for the powers that we need uh, we have to real work and deal with the world that we're in and that this is the one that we're in and this is why we're taking the approach that we are but there is absolutely a comprehensive analysis of the reason why we're taking it to make sure that we do hit the right people and they do get the right families who require the support uh, in the in the best possible way tom arthur followed by alexander stewart thank you presiding officer this announcement today should be welcomed across the parliament and can I therefore ask the Cabinet Secretary what support she expects to get from other parties in ensuring that this new benefit is introduced in the right time frame so it can start working for children and families in my constituency of Renfrewshire South and children and families across Scotland. Aileen Campbell. I thank uh, Tom Arthur for the question and I do underline what I said in my statement that this does stand to be one of the most progressive policy proposals since devolution. Fitting given we're about to celebrate the 20th anniversary of our parliament being reconvened. And alongside our statutory child poverty targets and the wider actions we're taking, it sets Scotland apart as being the only part of the UK that is taking such concerted action to reduce and eradicate child poverty. And we are really pleased that, in general, that there seems to be, although there are grumblings, a degree of support. But it is absolutely incumbent upon us all, given that we collectively signed up uh, to the Child Poverty Act, we collectively signed up to hitting the targets that we need to hit uh, in order to shift the curve in child poverty, that the MSPs across this parliamentary chamber give their welcome, give their support for this new benefit, and give their assurance today that they will seek to continue the payment if they ever reach uh, administration. Alexander Stewart, followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to confirm whether new regulations for terminal illness will be introduced in the summer of 2020, or will this benefit also be delayed? Aileen Campbell. Yeah, nothing has changed on that one. Stuart McMillan, followed by Gordon Lindhurst. Thank you, Presiding officer. Uh, officer. I warmly welcome uh, this statement. I'm sure my constituents in Greenwich and Inverclyde will do so as well, particularly the substantial measures uh, in, in this statement. But can the Cabinet Secretary highlight other key priority areas to actually tackle inequality and reduce poverty? Aileen Campbell. Yeah, we will uh, continue to work hard across the whole of government, recognising that this requires a whole government approach to tackle uh, child poverty, which is why we'll continue to concentrate on uh, the work we're doing to support employment opportunities, support actions on uh, the living wage, continue to provide the support through the financial health check and a whole range of other uh, issues. And given that Marie Todd is here, we'll continue to focus in on the early learning and childcare, delivered flexibly to ensure that families get the support 
support they need to enable them to go and access employment and training opportunities without having to face the, the burdensome cost that that uh, means that they need to face. So there's a whole range of actions that require our diligence and our commitment as a cross government uh, to enable us to reach the interim targets and ultimately the targets that we've set out in 2030. Gordon Lindhurst, followed by Ian Gray. Um, if I could just ask the uh, Minister if the Scottish Government will be bringing forward legislation as a basis for the new Scottish child payment, will there be primary or secondary legislation brought forward and if so, when might we expect to see that? Aileen Campbell. Thank you. We'll be taking this forward through a regulation, secondary legislation, and given that we will have over the summer months that opportunity to explore all the things that we need to make sure that we continue with the safe and secure delivery of social security uh, payments, that we'll be able to update the Parliament. My co colleague uh, Shirley Ann Somerville will update uh, the Parliament on some of that work and outline uh, the ways in which we'll take forward the regulations to deliver this payment. Ian Gray, followed by George Adam. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The Scottish Child Payment, which uh, all of my colleagues have uh, welcomed this afternoon, uh, is, as we've heard, uh, both demand-led and, and means-tested. So could the Minister confirm that the budget figures she gave uh, just a few minutes ago uh, are calculated on the basis of a notional 100% take-up? Aileen Campbell. Well, what we've done is to look and analyse uh, a number of different approaches. That analysis, those projections are also published today in that open and uh, transparent way that we need to do. And it is demand led these things. And that is what we have based the figures on. It, the analysis is there for Ian Gray to look at uh, and to come back with further questions. I'm happy to answer those things. But this is about being a demand led service delivered in the way in which we have outlined through the qualifying benefits but will stand to lift 30,000 children out of poverty, that 3% shift in uh, child poverty rates, which is so important to enable us to hit the child poverty targets. George Adam, followed by Jenny Mara. Thank you, President Officer. Can I add my voice to welcome the Cabinet Secretary's announcement of the Scottish Child Payment, and I look forward to the differences it can make in our communities. But a lot of today's statements con uh, content has been covered by previous questioners, so can I ask, what are the other key priority areas to tackle inequality and reduce child poverty? Aileen Campbell. Well, there uh, are uh, a range of uh, actions and activities that were taken forward to tackle uh, child poverty. I think one of the big things to point out to is within the Every Child, Every Chance uh, progress report, which shows that alongside the announcement today, the significant announcement on the Scottish Child Payment, that we're currently investing £527 of, uh, in targeted support for low-income families across a wide range of programmes to make a long-term sustainable difference to children uh, in poverty. That includes uh, things that I've outlined within, our, uh, uh, within uh, the statement that I made uh, today. It includes the, the work that Shirley Ann Somerville has taken forward. It includes the mitigation that we have to do to help protect those most vulnerable from the harsh realities of UK uh, reforms. But it doesn't include the things that we all enjoy, that the early learning and childcare, the education, the universal services, that social contract which underpins the society that we in this government uh, maintain and hold dearly. Jenny Mara, followed by Angela Constance. I welcome the Scottish Child Payment made today. Um, I think it's a good initiative and long overdue to help to tackle ta child poverty in Scotland and in Dundee, where 31% of our children live in poverty. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, as she encourages take-up, will she show some flexibility? I've had a constituent recently trying to take up the Best Start grant for a child starting school and has been told they're not eligible, not on income, but actually on the cut-off date because the child's school place was deferred. So can I ask her to perhaps look at this in terms of eligibility for the Best Start grant, but also encourage flexibility as she approaches this welcome new policy? Aileen Campbell. Well, um, People who defer, as I understand it, can, can apply, but absolutely, if you want to set out the specifics in correspondence, we'll make sure that you get the information, the support and any actions that we need to take, and we'll make sure that we can uh, deal with the points that you raise, because we also want to make sure that we do maximise uptake, and so if there are things that we can learn, then absolutely happy to do so. And the last requested question is Angela Constance. Thank you, President Officer. 
For as long as I have breath, I will always campaign for the full powers of independence. But given that this parliament made an all-party commitment to use our existing powers and resources to end child poverty, how will the Cabinet Secretary build consensus on not just what we will spend money on, but also the tough choices that will have to be made on what we don't spend money on if we are to focus our resources, focus our efforts and raise the debate uh, and take on the challenge uh, of ending child poverty. Aileen Campbell. Uh, and I thank uh, Angela Constance uh, for her question and also pay, pay tribute to her when she uh, took forward the Act and the uh, delivery plan and set in path the actions that we're reporting back on today, which are going to have a fundamental and transformative impact on children's lives and future life chances. Um, and she's right to point out that these issues that we grapple with do demand tough choices. I outlined the tough choices and the hard decisions that we had to make today in order to find and carve out the space to deliver this much needed uh, bit of support for families across the country. Uh, the progress report captures the actions across the whole of government and whether it's a, the economy or education, every cabinet secretary needs to be guided by the principles of creating a more uh, fairer and equal country. My job, as her job had been before me, is to be the one who ensures that those voices of those lived experiences, those voices uh, which, who experience poverty are not forgotten, to speak up for the folk who are not heard, who are disempowered and who are surviving but not thriving, ensuring that the decisions that we take as a government are examined through the lens of child poverty to ge generate those better decisions that we need to see happening. And it's the only way that we will ever make good on our national performance framework, which I fundamentally uh, genuinely believe in, because that doesn't just value the success of our society based on GDP alone, but on the depth of our humanity, the kindness, dignity and well-being. All of those things will ensure that we as a government take the right decisions, take those tough choices, which might be bumpy, but I think if we have the collective support of this parliament, we can overcome those bumps because ultimately where we want to go is a country that's fairer and has children's uh, rights and our eradicating of poverty uh, as well. So thank you. I've had a last minute request that I can accommodate. Uh, Bob Doris. I very much appreciate that, President Officer. I welcome the Cabinet Secretary the Child Payment, which will benefit 410,000 children across Scotland. The Cabinet Secretary mentioned the required alteration of the new disability assistance benefits timetables and accept that will absolutely be required. Can I ask if she's confident that new claimants for disability assistance and reassessments under Social Security Scotland can still be carried out by Social Security Scotland as opposed to the DWP by the end of the lifetime? of this parliament? Aileen Campbell. Yeah, uh, no, nothing is changing uh, uh, in relation to the question that Bob Doris uh, has asked me. We'll make sure, given his position as the convener of the, the, the Social Security co Committee, that we'll make sure that he's furnished with all the uh, implications for this, to make sure that he has got all access to the analysis and the implications of this. Uh, and we'll also make sure that he gets a letter uh, to make sure that he has a clarity of, of what this uh, announcement means in terms of the other uh, benefits that are delivered by Social Security Scotland. That concludes questions in the Ministerial Statement on Tackling Child Poverty Delivery Plan, First Year Progress Report, and we shall move on to the next item of business very shortly.